Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today we are reading Job chapter 17. It's the second round of debate. From chapter 15, Eliphaz. Then the second round of debate between Job and his three friends. So Elias was such a religious person. He kept blaming, scolding Job for having seen and not confessing his sins. So Job answered with two chapters. So they are one unit, these two chapters. So my focus, to, our focus today will be on chapter 17. I will summarize with just one line what Job was trying to say. And it's also the title for today. Just accuse me. Until death, I still hold fast to my integrity. Even though until death, I still hold fast to my integrity, I believe my way is of way of integrity. Just accuse me, accuse me for having sin. Whatever you say, just go on, go on accusing me. Anyway, I'm dying. But even until death, I would say that I am innocent. Job did not bow down to his friends. So his friends were trying to help God, to defend God. Because it's un impossible for God to allow the righteous to suffer. Because God is a righteous God. Our religious religion, our legalism, do not allow us to believe that God will uh, permit a righteous person to suffer. Job, within such a short time, you have lost everything. You were the mo you were the most wealthy, but now you lost everything. You definitely have something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. You have a lot of problems. And you don't confess and you say that, no, 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 I have not sinned. So Job's three friends want to defend God. So Job's friends want to defend God. Defend God. And they didn't know the mystery in the spiritual realm. But their legalism, their religion could not accept that a righteous person will suffer. He needs to protect their own value system for the patterns. Job, you something wrong with you. God has no problem for sure. It's definitely your problem. What's wrong with you? You have sinned. Your children have sinned. And that's why you are like this. <coughs> so what happened in the heavens, in the spiritual realm, was God telling Satan, look at my servant Job. Why did God say so? Why did God uh, put Job on the spot? Why? The mystery was, my belief, my thinking was, is uh, this Bible did not say this. It's my interpretation. Satan was walking back and forth throughout the earth. That's what uh, Satan answered God when God asked him, where have you been? <coughs> he is a roaring lion devouring everyone, looking everyone to devour. 
But God wants to stop Satan doing that. So he put、uh, Job on the spot. Have you seen my servant Job? On earth, there is someone upright, blameless like Job. Perfect. Ah,、uh, shun evil, fear God, shun evil. Job is the representative. Look at her. Look at him. He is perfect. Satan, you should not look for other people to devour. My job will stand firm. Will oppose you. Yes, there is someone like that on earth. Stop what you are doing. Do not accuse people. Attack people. Do not do that anymore. Yes, a lot of people have problems, but there are good people, blameless, upright. As、uh, as we go on on this train of thought, then there's the redemption of Christ. Christ was perfect, sinless. He was able to redeem all human, but. Job was only a, per, a human and not God, but this is like a a, a a type prototype. So these people were a pers are willing to be persecuted by righteous, right by for righteousness because that's what Job did. So his friends, Job himself, didn't see the value of his suffering. But God has counted it. Has God knew Job? So God, in full faith, allowed Job to go on this spiritual battle. <clears throat> Everyone else failed, but Job held fast to it. He stood firm. His friends failed. But Job continued. But now his friends became his enemies, become became someone who attacked Job. Job had enough suffering; he was attacked by Satan. God did not attack Job; it was not God. But people cannot see the work of Satan, so they blame it on God. His three friends were like this, and even Job himself thought like that. He thought that it was God who attacked him. Even though Job think like that, in this chapter, I still hold fast. I still hold fast to my integrity. I do not change. If I perish, I perish. I die anyway. Now I'm going to the way of death, but I do not give up. I divide this chapter into three paragraphs. When we share Book of Job, do not、uh, share it with like a logical mind, because the logical mind cannot understand. The logical mind is limited. So Job, he was full of emotions in deep agony. How can he be rational when he was in deep agony? He's in deep, deep agony. He was going through such a hard time. I cannot have any other way out. How can he say smile? Oh、uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. He had no feelings, really. Impossible. So when we read the book of Job, do not be very rational. Do not be flat. It's like no, nothing happened. Ah,、uh, if you're dozing off reading your Bible, oh, Job is going through hard time. Oh, okay. I don't know what he's trying to say anyway. Then our emotion is not in it. 
if we put our humanity, our feelings in it, and you understand Job's feelings, we need to put our emotions in it when we read it. Then we can start to understand what Job was feeling and understand the truth. So I divide into three paragraphs. Verse 1 to 5, the first paragraph. God makes, gives, makes me die in integrity, but my friends mock at me. God allowed me, allows me, these righteous persons to perish, but my friends mock me. Verse 1, my spirit is broken, my days are extinguished. The grave is ready for me. My spirit, my breath is broken, going to end. My spirit is broken, my days are extinguished. The grave is ready for me. And Job say, I'm going to perish. Are not mockers with me, and does not my eye dwell on that provocation, provocation? I'm going to perish. So mockers, they, these are you. They mock me. Mockers, my friends. They are my friends. In the first round of conversation, you kept mockering me. You keep mocking me. You keep uh, tea, um, despising me. You are with me. And does not my eyes dwell on that provo provocation? That's how you provoke me, accuse me, mock me, attack me. Your speech attacks me. You seem like coming to comfort me. You, you are my friends. But now you provoke me. You provoke my, you stirred up my emotions. You are mocking me. You are accusing me. Now put down a pledge for me with for me with yourself. Who is he who will shake hands with me? He was telling his friend, "You treat me like this." Oh God! You say I have seen. Give me proof. Give me evidence. My friend said that I have seen. Okay, give me evidence. You, you have put down a pledge for me. You know I am of integrity. Who can vindicate me? Who can put down a pledge for me except you that I am innocent? No one wants to. No one thinks that I'm a, a man of integrity. For you have hidden their hearts from understanding, therefore you will not exalt them. You have hidden their hearts from understanding. You have blinded their eyes. You will not exalt them for sure. They will, they will not have good outcomes. They accuse me wrongly. They will not have good outcomes. Only you, God, can vindicate me and put down a pledge for me. No one dares. And God, you know everything. You know me. You put down a pledge for me. Verse 5, he who speaks flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children will fail.
You have hidden these people, those who accuse me from understanding. You blinded them. Yes, you will not exalt them for sure. They are my accusers. They speak lies. They twisted many things. They used uh, schemes to attack me. They done wrong. They rob their friends. They do all these for themselves. For their pride, for their false truth. They betrayed me, their friend. They put me at as put me on the table. They robbed me. <clears throat> Even the eyes of their children will fail. They they will be blind. You hide your you hide you have hidden their hearts from uh, understanding. Their children will suffer too. So Job was like. So he was like throwing his all vent his all his anger. He even cursed his friends, the descendants of his friends. He was so, so agitated and angry. I am going to die. You, as my friend, should have pity on me. Pity me. Aren't you coming to comfort me, support me? But now, why are you coming to accuse me? For what reason? Why? Why did you betray me? Friends, why did you betray me? Why did you rob me, accuse me? Oh God, vindicate me. God, let them be blind. Now you have blinded these people. You will not exalt them. They would not end well. <coughs> he's talking to his friends. It seems like he's talking to God, but he's also you, you cannot tell whether he's talking to God or to his friends. <coughs> Second paragraph. <laughs> uh, one line in uh, the second paragraph, the subheading. Upright man may die despised, uh, abandoned by <coughs> legalist, legalist. They still hold on to their integrity. Upright man may die, but they are rejected by his friends. They are the legalistic, they are the religious. And box Job with his legalism, with his rules and commands. And yet, Job say, "I will hold fast to my righteousness. I am dying. I'm being treated by you. Yet, I hold on to my righteousness." Verse six to ten, the sec uh, second paragraph. But he has made me a byword of the people, and I have become one in whose face men speak. My eyes has also grown dim because of sorrow, and all my members are like shadows. Verse 6 and 7. God, you have made me a byword of the people. I am upright. I thank you that you have given me abundance in the past. But today, you allowed me to be in this suffering, extreme difficulties, and I have been, I have been a byword of the people. People laugh at me, mock me, 
despise me, tease me, accuse me. They even spit on me. They humiliated me. They abandoned me. No one dares to come near me. Even my friends who come close to me are mocking me, accusing me. My eyes has grown dim. My eye has grown dim because of sorrow, and all my members are like shadows. My eyes have grown so dim that I couldn't see. All my members are like shadows. I'm dying. Upright men are astonished at this, and the innocent stirred himself up against the hypocrite. Verse eight. We may not know what they are saying, what he's saying. So upright men refer to Job himself. Upright men are astonished at this. Job cannot believe that's what he is going through. That he ends up like this. I hold fast to my righteousness, my integrity. That's my outcome. I hold fast to my integrity. That's my outcome. That I have suffered. I have I have become a byword, and I I have been mocked. Everyone is mocking me, speaking lies. Everyone is attacking me. But I, I ask myself. I am a right person. I have done no wrong. I have done God no wrong. I really have done no wrong. But everyone says that I have sinned. Upright men are astonished at this, and then Job said, "No, I can't believe this is happening to me. I am innocent, but you stir yourself up against me." And the innocent stirs himself up against the hypocrite. You say this of me, you do not understand me. I am the innocent. I am upright. You attack me this way, I will attack you. I will counter attack. The the innocent stir himself up against the hypocrite. Friends, you treat me like this. You are not of God. You are ungodly. You are wrong, totally. I will scold you. I will condemn you. You have done wrong. Why do you speak of me like this? Why do you twist the fact? You should not do this. Beware! God is here. God will deal with you. God will blind you, and then God will make your children' eyes fail. Yet the righteous will hold to his way, and he who has clean hands will be stronger and stronger. Verse nine. Yet, yet, as how you have treated me, you have stirred me to anger, to wrath. Yet the righteous will hold to his way. The righteous hold to his way, the way of righteousness. I have been righteous all along. Chapter one, verse one. I have been righteous. I am clean, perfect. Fear God, shun evil. This is my way. This is my integrity. I will hold fast to it. I will not give up. Just mock me. Just attack me as you like. I'm going to die anyway. But I will not give up. He who has clean hands will be stronger and stronger. With whatever strength I have left, I will hold fast to my integrity. Now I'm dying. 
I hold to my integrity. I am happy for this. I take pride in this. I will continue this way, and this is my hope. I believe in integrity before God. God will consider me as integrity. With whatever strength I've got left, I will do this. But please come back again, all of you, for I shall not find one wise man among you. Verse ten. Among you all, all of you, come back again, all of you, all of you. My three friends here. Call all your friends. Everyone belongs to you. Get your friends. Come get more friends. Call call all your friends over the world who agree with you. Bring them back. Bring them to me. Now come and accuse me. I shall find what not. I shall not find one wise man among you. All are legalistic. You know, hypocrites. Everything you say is, is wrong, is fake, is accusation, is trying to smear my name. You just say I have sinned, but all you say is lie. They are not true. None of you is wise. I find no one wise among you. You think that you are wise? You hold fast to your wisdom and accuse me. I shall find not one. I shall not find one wise man among you. He scolded his friends. Now the third paragraph. Hold on to righteousness even at death. Colin, my ultimate hope. Job also feels like God has abandoned him. God, you have abandoned me, even though I'm perishing. You let me suffer till death. Now I'm definitely dying. <coughs> What is my ultimate hope? Integrity is still my hope. So here he say, "I will hold on to my weight," and here he say, "Integrity is his hope." I believe God, you have affirmed my integrity, even though I know nothing. But one thing I know, I must hold on to my integrity, my righteousness. Even if I die, I will hold on to my righteousness. Verse eleven to sixteen、uh, is kind of like a rhetorical question, so it's not easy to understand. So、uh, the beginning of these three paragraphs correspond to chapter sixteen. Verse eighteen to twenty-two. That I am dying, I shall go the way of no return. Verse twenty-two of chapter sixteen. That's how it started in these three paragraphs. The third paragraph: My days are past, my purpose are broken off. Even the thoughts of my heart they change the night.、Oh, <coughs> verse eleven. What I think, what I hope, my days pass. My purpose are broken off. Even the thoughts of my heart, my days are past. I will die soon. I have nothing. I don't even have the hope that God will vindicate and. 
prove me righteous. God will vindicate me. I don't even have this hope that God will say that I am righteous. God will plead my case. I have even lost this hope. My hope, my friends, that's you. They change the night into day. The light is near, they say, in the face of darkness. You, all of you, they change the night into day. The light is near, they say, in the face of darkness. You cannot discern good and evil. You cannot tell light and night, darkness. You say the light is darkness, the darkness is light. You say you change the night into the day. You have turned everything around. You call me a righteous and upright person, a sinner. You say that I should give up my righteousness, my integrity. You say that I should you tell me to do something I should not do. I definitely won't. I shall continue to hold on to righteousness. Even though I'm dying, even though you attack me this way, even though that's what your, your, your opinion is, I think this is, uh, is uh, light, and you say I'm darkness. I say I'm darkness, and then you say, oh, maybe, yeah, yeah, I'm good and evil, and I can have both. I say I am sinless. You say that I have sinned. I say, no, no, I have not sinned. But you say, no, maybe you don't know. You have sinned anyway. Why do you hold on to this? Are you greater than God? Are you more wise than God? We are not wiser than God. But I don't, know, I don't believe that... Uh, White is black, black is white. I don't believe that my righteousness is sin. Why do you say of me this way? Why? And then here it says, verse 13, If I wait for the grave as my house, are, if I make my bed in the darkness, if I say to corruption, you are my father, and to the worm, you are my mother and my sister, where then is my hope? As for my hope, who can see it? Verse 13 to 15. Um, if I if I wait for the grave as my house, I'm going to the Shiloh. If I take a Shiloh as my goal, that's where my house will be. Then my, uh, if I make my bed in the darkness, if I give up light, I will go down to darkness, to Shiloh. If I put my hope in uh, the Shiloh, I hope for nothing else. I just hope for the Shiloh. I embrace death. I embrace uh, darkness. You say you change the night to into day, and there is no difference between light and darkness, and everything is darkness, right? Then I should not be in, uh, uh, upright. I embrace my sin. I embrace da uh, death. Then I will go down to Shiloh. And then I will make my bed in the darkness. And then I will say to worm, you are my mother, you are my sister. If that's the case, where is my hope? Where then is my hope? As for my hope, who can see it? That means no one can see my hope. Then I will have lost all hopes. What is his hope, actually? That's his integrity, his uprightness. He holds fast to his integrity. That's what it says in the previous two chapters. Whatever it costs, I will hold fast to my integrity uprightness. From chapter one, or from the first round of the conversation, I still love God, I still fear God and shun evil. 
not up for this, my what I'm going through this, that you attack me this way, that I do not fear God and then I will do evil. No, I still I want to be a man with a clean hand. Even though I die with this little, little, little strength I have left, I hold fast to my integrity. This is my hope. If I embrace what you are t saying, and then I do evil, I will go down to the to the grave, to the shallow. Where is my hope then? Who will see my hope? Why I'm not clean anymore? Who can see my integrity? No one. You want me to give up even the little, little integrity that I hold on to? Impossible. My friends, your accusation, your words, I will not accept. I'm saying to you, I still hold on to my integrity. That's the angry roaring of Job at his friends. Even though I die, even though you keep saying this, even though every one of us is saying this of me, the, everyone, but I will find none wise among you. God has blinded you all. God will give you no understanding. As for me, I will hold on to my integrity. Verse, verse 16, will they go down to the gates of Shiloh? Shall we have rest together in the dust? I will hold on to my integrity. Even though I go down to the gate of Shiloh, even if I die, even though I go down to the grave, to the Shiloh, I still hold on to my integrity. Even though I go down to the, to the gate of Shiloh, I do not give up on my integrity. This is my only hope in death. I do not give up on this. Even though if I am dead, dead, even though no one sees my integrity, no one believes that I am, I am innocent. I still believe that I am upright. I am innocent. My friends, away from me! Stop attacking me! Stop saying that I'm. I have sinned. That's his shouting, screaming of Job at his friend. There is a truth here. Whatever people, however people attack you, false religion, false legalism, <coughs> how they try to box you, and attack you, mock you, in whatever situation, just like Job, even though in that desperate situation, he still do not give up. Being in being in of integrity and innocence, fear God and shun evil. Even though he is in the gate of Shiloh, hold on to the integrity God gives him. God is still God. He still has his work. Whatever people say. Whatever people say, he believes God and fear God. This is something worth us learning from him. May God bless us. We have this heart, the heart to follow God. Be, be an upright and a blameless man. Fear God and shun evil. Amen. Bless you. That's the end of the message. Let's arise before God. He is our hope.
Jesus, you are with us. Jesus, you are with us. In whatever situation, you are with us. When Job faced the mockery of his friends, he was accused. He was not understood. He was attacked. God, you are with him. You are with him. Brothers and sisters, in our lives, we'll face many struggles and difficulty. Are not mockers with me, and does not my eye dwell on their provocation? Are not mockers with me? Does not my eyes dwell on their provocation? So Job saw he faced his suffering, and then he faced mockery from his friends, oppression. Many legalisms, religions. He was oppressed, so Job could not catch his breath. In your life. You face a lot of mockery. Or maybe you suppress your feeling. You dare not to touch your pain. I encourage you to come to the front. <coughs>
people keep judge you. You have been tormented by the spirit of accusation. If that's you, then come to the front. God wants to heal you. He will release your energy. You are being mocked. You are being mocked. You are being wrongly accused. You are misunderstood. Maybe it has been a while, but you never let it out. You cannot manage. Sometimes you even accuse yourself. You say, yeah, that's me. I'm so bad. But Job saw his own righteousness, his uprightness. Maybe we have not done wrong. But if we keep being accused to a point that we cannot hold on to it, and we say, yes, that's me, I'm just so bad. That's how I should be treated. <coughs> I invite a worker to come to the fronts to our brothers and sisters and pray for them and help them. I invite brothers and sisters sitting. In the past, you people were accusing you, accusing you behind your back, or maybe just mock you to your face. You feel so misunderstood. Maybe a few tens years, maybe a few decades have passed, but it's still, it's still the same. <clears throat> Today we want to uproot it. We need to uproot it. May you, God, may you anoint all co-workers. the spirit of comfort will come upon them, strengthen them. Strengthen them. The spirit of comfort moves among us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We can only fix our eyes on you. Holy Spirit, may you heal us.
You know that we cannot defend ourselves. Accusation is just like a sharp arrows; they pierce our heart. But oh God, oh God, oh God! We can only find uprightness in you. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come in the whole place, not just people in the front, but brothers and sisters sitting down, brothers and sisters watching. Deeper of your healing, deeper of your healing, come in. You know what the a brother and sisters the how they have been wrongly accused. Maybe it's even their relatives. My relatives will accuse us. You know, the agony that we cannot even defend ourselves. Holy Spirit, may you come and heal us. Go into the whole venue. Go into our brother and sister because they have been uh, suppressed for all these years. We want to forgive, we want to forgive and forget, but we can't. It's so hard, so hard. Holy Spirit, Jesus, may you heal us, heal us. Lord Jesus, you are not just healing people on site, but also to the people watching online. Everyone who is being in misunderstanding, being wrongly accused, being condemned. They are being wrongly accused. They cannot defend themselves with their speech, with their words. Holy Spirit, may you go to their lives and heal them. I hear that um, uh, for the brothers and sisters who are being wrongly accused, God is telling you. God tells you, I will vindicate you. I will plead your case. On earth. No one can plead your case and vindicate you. No one wants to listen to your explanation. Even you try, people still twist your words. Everything that you do. But I hear God saying to you, "I will vindicate you. I will vindicate you. I will revenge." Believe that. The God you believe, you follow, you serve, is righteous, is just. When you live on earth, you think that no one understands you, no one knows you. Many accusation is twisted. They will come with bad intention. Some are like sharp arrows, and they even have a poisonous hook. Everyone, every arrow pierces your heart, pierces your thoughts and your mind. But I see God; those poisonous hook, God plucks, pluck it out one by one by one. God will de 
take uh, take away the poisons, clean up your wood, and he bind up your wood. By my understanding, my listening, my love, I will love you and bind you up. I will vindicate you. I am the one who revenge. I am the one who judge. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. I know all your misery, your groaning. I have heard it all. How people trample on you. The bad、uh, the attack from others. And God is saying to you, I know it all. I know it all. I have heard it. I have seen it. I'm the one who vindicates you. What you have lost, God will give you back double. The humiliation you suffer, and God say that is on me. Is on me. I will give you great honor. And I see God crowned you with a crown. Whether people are watching online or、uh, on site, God say receive the anointing of a king and blessing. I will give you great honor and comfort. Father, I come before you, and I bless brother,、uh, every、uh, brother and sisters watching online and on site. You are the one who vindicate them. You will plead their case. Your signs and wonders will come to them. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, brother and sisters. So Job has come to this point. He still hold on to his way. Fear God and shun evil. That's his way, the way of fearing God. Even though he has lost all his hope, to the gates of Shiloh, he still hold on to this. This is something we must learn from him. On earth. That you, you can never be vindicated. No one can plead your case. Maybe even in court, you have been given wrong、um, verdict. You know that you have been declared guilty for wrong reason. People think that you are wrong, but only God knows. Only you yourself know. This is how I felt when I was in Vancouver. I can only go to God, but thank God.、Uh, we have two chapter, first two chapter in Job. He did it started with chapter one and two, not from chapter three. We know what happened in the spiritual realm. We saw the battle on、uh, in heaven. When we read the book of Job. In every chapter, we need to go back to the first two chapters. Refer back to it. When we finish the book of Job, we must look at what God says at the very end. God still reigns, but、uh, many things that we do not understand. On earth, when we are being accused wrongly, in the name of Jesus, I speak to you. Yes. You can never be declared innocent on earth. No one vindicates you. Maybe when the day you die to others, you are guilty. To that point, we still hold on to our integrity, like Job. Our integrity cannot be shaken, moved by poverty or even by wealth. We need to hold on to our integrity. Whatever trial, temptation we face, even danger, we hold on to that. Even though we are being wrongly accused, my eyes, our eyes, do not be on this world. Do not care what other people say of us, how people attack you. God is here. Our eyes 
are on God. So here it keeps saying, eyes, eyes, in this chapter, are you blind? Are you blurred? Or you can see clearly. Do you, do, does God put truth in you? Our eyes are important. In the name of Jesus, I speak to all of you. People on site, watching online. When you face wrong accusation, when you face suffering, we look to God. We look to what's happening in the spiritual realm. And that may God show us what's happening in the heavenly realm. Our eyes are on God. Our eyes are not on your friends. Do not fix on the attacks. Oh, how miserable I am. Yes, 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 you are going through misery. But we look to God. We lack effortless. God, you reigns. I do not struggle. I continue to hold to my way. I believe you. I trust you. Our eyes are on God. We see what happens in this in in this in the heaven. Job and his friend didn't see it, but we know we see it. Above the world, above the earth, there is God, there is the spiritual realm, there is spiritual battle. We don't understand. But when we see the Lord face to face, God will show us. We continue to trust God and his provision. We hold to our integrity. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. In whatever situation, however you are being smeared, black, black mouth, you will look to God. Yes, we'll be upset, but we must have faith. Do not lose our joy. God, may our joy not be stolen by the enemy. In you, we rejoice always. Yes, we are in deep trouble, facing many attacks. But we can have full victory. We can rejoice. We can relax and be effortless because God is with us. God, may you bless every brother and sister uh, watching online, on site. Holy Spirit, lay your hand on them. Give them strength. Anoint their eyes, their thoughts and their minds. Then they can fix their eyes on you. Understand spiritual mystery and receive revelation from you. We can walk on the way of faith. We are weak. We need you. We are not perfect as Job. We need your grace. Help us, Lord. Uh, help us to be like Job. We just have the tiny bits of strength left. Our hearts walk in the way of integrity. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I bless all brothers and sisters. May you have peace. May God protect you and show you grace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bless you all. That's the end of our meeting. See you tomorrow.